Hey, what's going on, bro? So today I'm gonna to teach you how to basically just switch your brain into doing good habits repetitively and almost enjoying it, or sort of tricking your brain into enjoying the hard work. So this isn't any like simple trick or new habit tactic or whatever. It's more of a mindset shift that'll help you out in the long term. And a quick trick or a simple, you know, one new simple trick probably won't really help you out in the long term. What you need is really just to rewire your brain into enjoying doing the hard work. Because these usually these simple tricks only last for a couple of days and then they just don't work. So although these simple tricks and like little tactics can be awesome, we really need to just do the main thing first. So what is that? So just listen to this for a sec. So what is old must die to make room for the new? So what does that even mean? So right now, just think of your identity, of who you are, right? Your identity controls basically your actions and the limits that you have. Who you think you are will control that, right? So who are you? Well, you're not your name, you're not really your body, so really who are you? So who you are is basically your experiences and the actions that you've taken. So if you've experienced being a loser for almost all of your life, people have told you you're a loser, you've had a lot of actions that have resulted you in being a loser, then you're probably going to identify with being a loser. And when deep down inside you just think you're a loser who can't get things done, that's gonna control the actions that you take, right? And it's also gonna control the limits that you have. Because when you just think you're a loser and you can't get things done and that's who you really think you are, you're not gonna go try a new thing. You're not gonna go work hard on something because you think it's just not worth it because you're a loser, right? So the first thing we need to do before we try to do any sort of self-improvement is to kill this old identity. So to make this simple and make sense, think of a tree, right? When they wanna grow new leaves, they usually drop old leaves and kill them off and then the tree has no leaves but then it eventually grows new leaves back. That's kind of like what we're doing with our identity. So we need to kill our old loser identity because that basically holds us back and replace it with something new. When you have this deep identity of just being a loser or an addict or whatever it is, your life will usually align with that because your actions that you take align with who you think you are. So when you're trying to improve yourself but deep, deep down inside, you feel like you're a loser, it feels like you're just like, you can't actually do these habits because they're kind of fighting against each other. But when you get rid of that and start replacing it with something new and you align by this new identity, these habits start to become easier. So right now, just think of your ideal self. And you don't need to like have this whole plan out or whatever, but just have an idea of who your ideal self is. Not who people say you should be, not who like social media tells you to be, like who you actually want to be. Like what's like the final form or like this version of yourself that you want to be, right? And then now think of all the parts of your character that you have right now that don't contribute to that ideal self. Those are the parts of your identity that you need to kill off. So if you wanna be more disciplined and you wanna be like David Goggins and you really wanna be someone like that, but you have all these parts of you that are the opposite of that, you need to kill those parts off. Before you add anything new into your life or you try to improve anything, you need to first take out what's really the main constraint. And a lot of times that's your identity. So. Once again, just write down like who you wanna be, right? And then right after that, write down all the characteristics that don't help with that stage you wanna be in. Before you add anything new in your life, you need to destroy the old parts so you can allow new growth to come in. You usually just act like who you think you are, right? And it's so it sounds so simple, but it really makes sense. If you deep down inside think you're like super smart or you think you can just, if you can put your mind to it, you can get things done, then you're probably gonna do that. But if deep down inside, you think you're stupid, you can't get things done, your actions will usually reflect on that. And I know this from experience. So basically, there was a time where I had a business and I was doing door-to-door -door sales, but I felt really insecure and I was nervous to go in front of doors. But then I found this guy who was really smooth and you know what I did? I basically just threw away this old part of myself and replaced it with a new identity and I just said, you know what? I'm pretty good at sales, I'm just like this guy. And I basically sort of pretended like I was this guy that was good at sales. And I just tried to act like him as much as possible. You know what happened? I started getting a bunch of sales. I started making like four grand a month just from like this new business. And once again, it's, it's super simple. If you think that you can never get anything done, you're never gonna quit porn, you're just a porn addict, and you're just addicted to video games and you can't get anything done and you just, you're never gonna get anything done in your life, your actions will reflect that because you think you have these limits. And once again, if you think that you're smart and as long as you put the work in, you can get things done, 
you know, if you can just put your mind to it, you can actually make things happen, you're probably gonna go try new things and actually try to make things happen. And from that, things will actually happen. So one of the main just constraints of us repeating good habits is because we have this identity that sort of clashes with the things we wanna do. So right now, I just want you to do this actionable step because it actually helps a lot. So right now, just get a notebook out and on the top of the page, just write like my ideal self and just write in extreme detail, like like autistically autistic detail of who you wanna become. Like everything about who you wanna become. Or maybe you wanna become more like a certain role model. Maybe you wanna be like David Goggins or Muhammad Ali. Now a good way to just start adapting this new identity sort of is when you go through your day-to-day -day life, just think about like the actions you're doing and just ask yourself, okay, would my ideal self be doing the thing I'm doing right now? And then if it's a no, then just don't do it. And what this does is when you think of like this ideal self or this person you want to become more like, you start to have a little more respect for yourself and higher standards of who you want to be. So when you want to become this certain kind of guy and you start identifying with it and you're like, yeah, I need to become this type of person, these bad habits are start becoming pretty unattractive to you. So just really obsess over the person you want to become. And a big mistake you don't want to make is you don't want that person you want to become to feel like it's super far away. Even if it is, just sort of gaslight yourself into thinking you're close to there or you're already there and just start adapting traits of the person you want to become. Start trying to act like them a little more. Stop, start trying to think like this person you want to become a little more. Start walking like this person you want to be a little more. Start just adapting as much as you can of this person you want to become. And once you do this, you'll start seeing that you're going to start doing certain habits and certain actions that align with this person more. So if this person you want to become is more disciplined, you're probably going to just start being more disciplined. And this really worked for me. So here's another actionable step. On a journal or a piece of paper, just write do not do list. And then once you have this ideal person of who you want to be planned out, write down all the things you do every single day and just that don't align with who you want to become. So write down all these things that you just shouldn't be doing because they don't align with who you want to become. And then write why you do them. And just kind of just go a little bit deeper and just think about exactly why you do them, what do you do. And then just look at this every single day. So you have this person of who you want to be in your head and you have this list and you can just look at it and then you'll have this in your head all the time. And the biggest mistake is you don't want to forget about this because if you do, you'll probably just fall back into this thing of being a loser and just forgetting about your habits. So you need to be obsessed over it. So mainly it's just about killing your old identity, replacing it with a new one, adapting the traits of who you want to become, and start just thinking you're like this person, right? And once we do that, what are some other things we can do? So the next thing you can do is a dopamine detox. This really helps make work feel a lot easier too. Doing hard work sometimes feels like oddly difficult or pointless is because you're basically training your brain to have a horrible attention span. When you do all these habits every single day, your brain's just gonna adapt to it and become worse. So what can we do to reprogram our brain into enjoying doing hard work and keeping good habits? So you know that when you do an instant gratification activity, it releases dopamine. And the same thing happens when you do like a workout or you make a sale or you hit a PR, you get dopamine. So basically dopamine is just the chemical that rewards you to keep on doing something. So when you're doing all these bad habits, your brain's gonna reward you to keep on doing it. And the thing is, why would you do like something difficult that you get rewarded for when you could do something easy that you get rewarded for? So we just need to take out those easy things you get rewarded for so the only thing we can really get dopamine from are these difficult things. So when you remove all these instant gratification activities from your life, the work and the difficult things start to feel fun because you still get that dopamine from it, but you don't have the other option. Your only option is to really just do the hard work, hit the workouts, eat clean, you know, do the basically delayed gratification activities. So there's really a bunch of ways to quitting bad habits, but really just the core of quitting bad habits is improving your mental health. So your bad habits aren't necessarily the problem. The real problem is usually just bad mental health. So you need to just fix your mental health and then usually these bad habits, which are like the side effects, will start to go away or they'll feel a lot easier to quit once you fix your mental health. So fixing your mental health is not like some easy thing and it, there's a lot of different ways to improve it but you just need to know that you should stop focusing on these habits as the problems and really look at your mental health and figure out why your mental health is bad and then these habits will usually be easier to quit.
So the last tactic is more of a little tip and trick, but it's super good and it's like a cheat code. So I'm gonna share it with you. So there's a study where a bunch of college students were basically locked up in a room with absolutely nothing in it for hours. So just a super boring environment, but they're given one thing, which was a shocker to put on their finger or their hand or something. And over 50% of the students decided to shock themselves because humans hate being bored. We'd rather go through pain than be bored, at least most of us. So we can use this to our advantage. So really one of the secrets to just doing more hard work is to just make the environment where you work boring, like super boring, because your brain will default to the most stimulating thing. So if your environment is super fun, you have all this fun stuff around you, why would you choose work? It's just gonna feel like you're going against the wind or something, right? But when your environment is so boring and work is the funnest thing, then it's pretty easy to just do your work. Here's what I do. So my room is pretty boring. It's just a desk and a bed. So doing the work isn't that difficult, but I still have my guitars in there and like just other stuff. So sometimes I can get distracted. So what I do is I just go to the library and I just go into this really boring ass section and all of a sudden work becomes fun because it's the only thing my brain can really go to and I'd rather have it do something than nothing, right? So that's about it, bro. Um, pretty much, first of all, the, the core problem of like, the reason why you can't do these habits and stick with them is because you have this identity of kind of being a loser that holds you back. And then you can create a new identity and then really just start adapting the characteristics of the person you wanna become. And then also it's really important to go on a dopamine detox so you can reward your brain for doing the right things. And then also, once again, just having a boring environment can just make work a lot easier. So that's pretty much it, bro. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can actually implement some of this advice because all of it has helped me a lot and I think it'll help you too. So yeah, I hope you implement it. If it works, let me know. If it doesn't, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, either way, have a good day, bro.